Hi, I'm going to make a video uh, about the uh, classic application problem uh, I like to call free fall. Um, it's generally there's different kinds of this. Uh, these are displacement videos uh, about in which you have information about how far you ha are or how, how high you are. Or you have some sort of information about how far you are from something. It could be the ground or it could be a tree uh, or a bunny rabbit. And you also have information about your initial velocity, how fast you are going in the beginning. And you have information about a constant acceleration. With all that information, you can actually make a, a quadratic equation um, in which we combine uh, all three parts, the acceleration part, uh, the velocity part, and your initial distance or height part uh, into an equation. And the way we can do this is we can set up an equation that equals your displacement in terms of time. So uh, displacement in terms of time, if you have an initial displacement, that's just an amount you start with. If you have a velocity, well, velocity times time equals displacement. So you can work with that too. Displacement can also be expressed as uh, with an equation of one half times acceleration times time squared. So if you have an acceleration, you can uh, create a displacement uh, expression there. So we're going to take advantage of that, and you'll have access to these notes. We're going to talk about a vertical displacement, which we will call height. And we're going to talk about a situation where you are on a trampoline, on a platform, 500 meters above the ground. You're on Mars. Don't worry about whether you have air. You might have air. Um, that's not part of the problem. Uh, I'll let you be creative when you write problems of your own about this sort of thing. But you're on Mars, uh, and that's going to tell us something about the gravitational acceleration, which is negative 3.711 meters per second squared. You have an initial jump velocity of 12 meters per second. So we're going to create a uh, function where instead of using d for displacement, it's going to be h in terms of time. And we're going to put together our different components. We're going to have our initial height, okay, which I'm going to express in variable terms like that. We're going to add that to our displacement, our, our height, based on our initial velocity. And velocity times time will give us that. So our initial velocity, that little zero means initial, times time. So that's another expression for velocity, that's for height or displacement based on uh, our velocity and time. And then finally, we have the component of one half times acceleration times time squared. Okay. Now, when we're talking about height and gravitational acceleration, oftentimes instead of A, we'll use the letter G. So you can do it that way. And we have our structure. Let's go ahead and uh, put it all together. So h in terms of t equals, okay, let's start with our gravitational acceleration part. So we know on Mars, the gravitational acceleration is negative 3.711. You might ask why negative, because acceleration is down when it comes to gravity, times time squared, okay? And then we're going to say plus our initial velocity, which was 12 meters per second times time, plus our initial height, which is 500 meters. Okay, let's simplify this a bit. H in terms of T equals, well, we got to get half of negative 3.711. Um, I'm going to cheat real quickly with the calculator and say negative 3.711 divided by 2 is going to get me negative. 1.8555. Okay, negative 1.8555 t squared plus 12 t plus 500. Okay, now we have a situation that's going to be really annoying to use factoring for. Um, could be done maybe, but I wouldn't recommend it. Then you might also use. Uh, completion of the square, that's also going to be pretty aggravating, but probably I would use the quadratic formula for this. Now, there are questions that we would probably ask on this problem. 
we would probably ask things like, how long is it going to take you to hit the ground? That's the basic question. So that means our height at whatever we want to find out the time when our height in terms of time is zero. So we're going to plug in all of this uh, and I'll copy that in. And we're going to use the quadratic formula for this. So assuming you've learned the quadratic formula by now, uh, we can identify you know, our ax squared plus bx plus c. And I, I'm using p instead of x, so OK. I'll plug in p instead. OK. And this is when that equals 0, we can apply the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula. Um, is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Um, and so we need to know what a, b, and c are to plug in and play. So a equals negative 1.8555, b equals 12, and c equals 500. So I have conveniently set up a cheat uh, graph for us to plug all that stuff in. Uh, if I go over here to my quadratic formula cheater graph, um, I have created a plus version of the quadratic formula and a minus version. So this is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I know that my a part was negative 1.8555. My b part was my initial velocity of 12. And my c part of it was 500. So now we can figure out how long it took before we hit the ground. So we either have negative 13 point some long odd long number, long decimal, or 19.964. We're going to discard the negative one because that's in the past. We want to know about the future. So what we can figure out is that we're going to land a little over, a little under 20 seconds from now. So our answer is this. I'll copy and paste it into here. So Time of landing is approximately this number. Uh, so we would actually call it 20 seconds. So it'll take us about 20 seconds to land. We can figure out some other things. Uh, we can figure out, I'm going to copy and paste this function into uh, my Desmos. We can figure out how high we are as well when and how long it takes us to get there. So I'm going to replace that with x. Replace that with x squared. Oops, the wrong thing. Uh, OK, x squared. And I'm going to replace that with x. And now I have a function. I'm going to have to zoom out on it because my y-intercept is 500. But you can start to see this. It's uh, those are x-intercepts, that's our positive landing time. But we can also figure out how high we went. So we started, I'm gonna shrinky-dink it down. We started at 500 meters above the ground, and we click on our vertex. The vertex tells us two things. It tells us how long it took us to get to the top of our jump, and how high we were. So, it took us 3.234 ish seconds, and we made it a little over 19 meters above the trampoline, so 519 meters. We could also figure out some other things. If we knew our horizontal velocity, the horizontal component of this, if we know that we've gone, that we're doing, uh, we're going uh, to be in the air for 20 seconds. Well, then we can, about 20 seconds, we can say roughly how far we're going to go horizontally because we can do a velocity times time for velo our horizontal velocity times uh, our landing time. So let's say our horizontal velocity was 15 meters per second. We can multiply that 
times this number here. Hello. Yes, I know. And we can say, okay, plug that in. We would have horizontally traveled nearly 300 meters. So we can get a lot of information out of these sorts of things. I'm going to stop sharing and plug my computer in. All right. I hope this video was helpful.